This is Twit. I loved this story, but it's actually kind of a, a deeper uh, question. He won a fine arts competition, but was it cheating? This is uh, a uh, Colorado State Fair digital digital category, the the digitally manipulated photography category. Uh, Jason Allen won, beating 20 other artists. Blue Ribbon, $300 prize, with an artwork he created through Midjourney, which is one of the new uh, generative art tools that are just taking off. Somebody said it's a Cambrian explosion of <laughs> AI art, and I think that may be, may be accurate. Um, the portrait, beautiful portrait, uh, looked like Renaissance art. Although if I when I look at it, I can tell that that's 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 AI generated. I mean, that's not that's clear to me. But maybe the judges didn't have as much experience with this stuff. Is it fair to? I mean, he says, "Well, I wrote the prompt," <laughs> and then he imported it, it in Photoshop and what? fixed it up a little bit. So. What category is it in? Was it in like painting? No, no, like, no. Normally they have a digitally specific... manipulated photography. Okay, then that's fair. I'm hard to you argue know? With I that. mean, that is exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I think rules. if you're talking about high art um, or experimental art, using an AI to make a weird painting that kind of looks like a computer made it, that is art in and of itself. Uh, and if if right. the judges don't know and they still look at it as just a work <laughs> itself and are like, yeah, that's great. We love that. If they didn't know it was AI, I don't know. It's hard to, I, t I find it hard to ding them on that. Even, even as someone who, you know, writes creatively and I feel like if an AI wrote a book and that book won a competition, Ooh. I would be probably a little miffed, but I also don't know that that would just probably make me a hypocrite. That like you got to hand it to it. Like if it's some like, of right, the I, AI right. made it's a, a better book, book it's or a good art, book, you're like, right? well, like, yeah, I, I screwed know. up. I, uh, <laughs> I, I have a degree in art. doesn't make me uh, better informed on this, but I studied a lot of art history as part of that degree. And one of the courses uh, looked at the concept of connoisseurship, which is how art is evaluated for its quality, right? So both by like, you know, for a price, but also how do you evaluate pieces of art and say this is better or worse, or this is a masterwork and so forth. And um, I think that this actually gets into that, you know, very abstruse little thing like connoisseurship is that there are you know this whole thing about kitsch right kitsch was a concept developed developed by uh clement greenberg like i don't know i think 80 years ago to describe art that was um uh, pre-digested you looked at it and it required no interpretation he was talking about uh, soviet art and other art that was super pedagogical and designed to just be the kind of you know pabulum to the masses you looked at it, it's like this is the message right and that um the opposite of kitsch is something that requires you know this interpretation you look at it and there's a perception and it was you know jackson pollock and all the people doing abstract impressionism dadaism before it surrealism and then uh, a, a pop art and later movements they all rely on this impression that art is something beyond just looking at a thing and saying that's a picture of a cake right so I'm sorry to get so deep into art history stuff here, but it applies because you're like, on what basis do the judges evaluate this? Are the components that they evaluated as being winning work uh, ones where they were mistaken things that they should have actually been looking at it more carefully? Or is it justified? Does this work actually, because of the sources in which it derives and how the algorithm has recombined it, does it make it justifiably something that you can compare and use that kind of searchship to say, this is actually equivalent to other work uh, of this cal uh, caliber? Or is it just prettier? Is it prettier? I will say, we do need to see what the other uh, art <laughs> works, competing works. Maybe they all really sucked. <laughs> We're not considering that. Um, yeah. Two, if we're con if we're looking at this from an art history l perspective, I think AI generated art would be a very futurist like mm -hmm. piece. Like this is kind of what the early futurist movement, like around impressionism, was talking about, which is that you know art is not precious. Art can be fast. Art is like movement and technology. And if in this case, art is typing in a couple words in a screen. That's art, baby. I actually I mean, go beyond that. I think that the uh, skill involved in typing the prompt, because it isn't usually just a few words. It's usually elaborate, and you often refine it, is a form of computer programming. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the future of computer programming, as we interact with machines, with AI, 
you know, computer programming up to this point, you very specific. The computer is going to do exactly what you said, no more, no less. But this is now the new, the new way of communicating with the computer. It's more of a conversation. I think that that's actually the new form of programming. And to, I think we're going to, to see it in a lot of areas. To me, I think the clearest indication that it, you know, is a valid form of art is that every new medium or style is always greeted with that question. But is it art? Right. right. You know, look you know, at the impressionists. The they were the impressionists, they were reviled. Right. right. They had to have their and own so, art show just to get show people their work. If people are asking that question, I think the answer is usually yes. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not what okay, you expect. That's not art, whatever. It was just in the <laughs> Everything it's, else. It, 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 it I, is I never the, want to see that prompt, again. The prompt for it is a still <laughs> no. of Donald Trump and Alex Jones in jail, photograph, natural light, sharp, detailed face, magazine, press, photo, Steve McCurry, oh David Lazar, Canon, Nikon, Focus. These prompts, I mean, pick one you like. Can, this, we, uh, can we put a Leo-themed prompt in here? Yeah. Is that... Uh, I did search for my name. This is the new this is the new Google search, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Was that your first search? Yeah, one of my first. So this is uh it's like Leonard this is, Cohen in the upper left corner there. Yeah. Well this is Disney a search engine. This is Cohen. a search engine that searches stable diffusion. Stable diffusion oh, is responsible for a lot of this Cambrian explosion over the last two weeks. It's an open source generator mm. that's been uh, made available to anybody. You can install it if you have enough horsepower, big enough GPU, and run it yourself. There's a, there are a lot of nuances to this story, a lot of facets to this story. One of the problems with stable diffusion, according to some, is it uses a lot of images, we'll talk about this later, that are not in the public domain as its training material. Uh, and yet, because people can play with it, it's we've seen a lot of progress in the stuff we can generate. Um, how about, I'll just do Adam Driver. How about that? Because they're more of him. A uh, a clear one to one for you. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah, me and Adam Driver. So these these are all uh, images that include that. <laughs> now, one thing Stable so Diffusion does is it will Ooh, show there's some Nazi iconography. Yeah, I was going to say there's some. Good. Excellent. <laughs> this one. Well done. This one is a portrait of John Ooh. Oliver standing next to Adam Driver, stoic, full body military oh, uniform. That's weird. Fantasy, intricate. Like John Oliver did an excellent segment, by the way, recently he on did. marrying a cabbage. He did, that and he married a cabbage. Incredibly, in it fact, was beautiful. Yeah, in fact, if I search for John a, Oliver, I'll find a lot more of his he uh, married material. A cabbage. And it looks it's like really him. just Adam Driver. Yeah. Adam Driver. Yeah, Driver. <laughs> yeah, it's all Adam Driver. <laughs> That's why I never thought about that. But well, yes, John and Adam have a history, I guess. But uh, they do. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of John. Oh, Adam. That's John. right. They have yeah. that. Uh, yeah. about that oh, community. there's a lot of him, John Oliver, covered in blood in a way that I would not have expected. Well, that came from, uh, he did a lot of searches, I think, in preparation. Well, he was searching on people doing searches of him or, or uh, yeah. work about him yeah. and then found the one in which he married a, married a cabbage. Highly recommend uh, watching that uh, segment that from the last Sunday. So this oh, God, that one over, over the right is terrifying. This one? <laughs> yes, that is my actual nightmare. This is a facial <laughs> portrait of John Oliver looking at the camera, laughing like a maniac, colorful background, lighting like in the Blair Witch Project. His teeth look like corn. Uh, they don't it's mention like the corn Joker teeth. And John Oliver had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so hey, Dan, I find remember, this stuff. A classic, oh, sorry. There's a classic sci-fi story. I want to say it's by C.M. Cornbluth, but I may be wrong, in which a machine falls through from the future into like 1940s or 50s, and a guy finds it, and he discovers it produces art. He gives it limited inputs, and it produces beautiful work. And what he doesn't realize is he it's written in a language he doesn't understand, and so he sends off, it looks like Swedish, so he sends off an instruction manual that came with it to get it translated. As he's using it, he starts to make these contracts. He's getting gallery shows. It's all being produced by the machine. And what he finds out, he gets the translation back, and it's a form, the person's like, this looks a little like Swedish, but he's been pressing the delete button all the time. So as the last image comes out, it's basically empty, and it draws a circle. And I was like, it was a perfect... <laughs> It's a perfect story from 80 years ago or 70 years ago about this idea of like automated art from the future. But then you hit the wrong button and you're, you're done. It's all over. Uh, one uh, senior research scientist at Google actually is sounding an alarm. Negar Rostamzadeh says, can't believe stable diffusion is out there for public use and that's considered huh. okay. Wait, why? Google's been very careful, as has OpenAI, to limit access to some of these oh. engines. And apparently, some scientists think uh, you've released the Kraken. <laughs> you've 
<laughs> if you've released uh, AI. Um, I think what's I think what re is required uh, for the development of a lot of these things is kind of this tight loop of interaction. And I think stable diffusion, that's exactly what's happened. It's getting better and better, and it's more and more intriguing. I just typed in bunny, and I'm getting a, a lot of weird things. I was going to say, that's a uh, not safe for work search. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, like. well, apparently uh, portrait of Taylor Swift as Lola Bunny in Space Jam. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Again, another extra, sentence that I would not have expected to yeah, end like extra that. Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot more. Uh, oh, yeah. There's that. a third arm. There's a third arm. Yeah. You need a third arm. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, we we're talking about day one earlier. You know, I've, always, I've, I've ridiculed Bezos using that because, you know, they're not a startup anymore. They want to pretend to be one and they're a multi billion it's dollar company. It's day two or day well, three at Amazon. Here's yeah, Joe yeah. Biden this, wearing we are, bunny we are, ears. <laughs> we are day one for a lot of AI stuff. It's amazing how much utility we can get out of AI. And it's still not very good by many measures. Like, you know, yeah. if you can. It's, I mean, I think voice recognition has gotten pretty good, but it still has a long way to go. This is in the early days of being practical and it produces remarkable stuff the the bid journey stuff is can be incredible uh, chuck amazing. wendig the uh the uh, uh sci-fi yeah. or sorry uh, hor horror author dan what do you call chuck wendig oh uh, he does or, uh, weird, weird multi-genre yeah. it's really interesting Enigma. guy great uh, yeah <laughs> and very funny guy and i think uh uh interesting user of technology and he is constantly publishing uh, instead of writing probably his mid journey queries onto Instagram. You're like, it's so beautiful. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe this could be any kind of amalgamation that it's not directly from a source. Here's some, uh, not, this that, is, not that image. Though. This is from <laughs> the mid journey community showcase. So these are, and this is another thing you, you, it's uh, my mom always said, if uh, all good bakers leave many cakes on the windowsill that, uh -huh. uh, that, you know, if you're going to, you throw out the bad ones, but if you're going to show it in a community so showcase, it's a success. And I would say these are stunning, these images. The first, like, 15 that you scrolled through all looked like PlayStation 5, like, title <laughs> characters, basically. Yeah. Well, I, I, maybe those prompts. But, I mean, look at this. This looks like breathtaking Baroque beauty, blonde beauty, full head, oval Baroque, Baroque frame. Not uh, Baroque. It's not Baroque. Right. But you know what? It's, it's more like a full head. It's, it's something. Here's a crescent moon covered in vines and roses. Art Nouveau. Um, I mean, if it can't get, if it ain't baroque, don't fix it. Right? <laughs> or like that. I knew you were gonna go there. Again. <laughs> I just had to. Uh, I think. Yeah. Is, I mean, you, if you if you follow communities of cartoonists and illustrators, uh, they're more freaked out than authors are. Maybe we're past being freaked out by it. I don't know uh, about well, automation. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's always something very tempting in this for me too, as somebody who has very little like visual art skills whatsoever and has done some work with like, you know, stock photos, making some book covers for stuff I'd self-published. I mean, the idea that you could generate art that would be not just a stock photo that you've sort of manipulated or worked with, like, I don't know, it's a, it's an attractive option because I there's no way in a million years that I would get the skills and develop them and have time to like sort of spend all the time it would require to get to this point. Does it mean it's taking jobs away from like people I could be paying to do that? I don't know. That's an interesting question. It, question is, I think where it gets complicated. Oh, I, I was just saying, I think where it gets complicated is I've seen a lot of um, major media publications as of late come under fire for using like lead images and stories mm -hmm. that are generated by mm -hmm. mid journey or Dolly or something like that. When, it's like this is the sort of illustration that typically these publications yeah. are paying a couple dozen different uh, freelance artists any given week or month to create. Um, I think the Atlantic's uh, Charlie Warzel had recently gotten some hot water because he had he has a small budget for his newsletter, so he's already just using stock images That's rather than image illustrations. Right but he yeah. had used the most horrifying photo of Alex Jones in a newsstand generated, I think, by Mid Journey, um, and it was. <laughs> I mean, people were quite upset about it. Uh, were they upset because of the image or upset because it took the uh, took bread out of the mouth of some illustrator somewhere? I mean, I think that people seeing it without context saw it and they were like, oh, The Atlantic, a publication that has a lot of money and typically is going to be paying and working with illustrators, is using an artificial intelligence powered system to create their lead artists. Like if The Atlantic is doing it, what is stopping any other publication? I mean, I think this is a little bit of a different case because he had a follow-up newsletter where he explained, I just run my small newsletter and have a very limited budget. Um, but 
I do think that it begs some question when you're talking about larger publications. Does it devalue? Does it devalue yeah. the work too? Right? Because if you know, if right. you are a freelance illustrator and you're like, "Well, here's my rate," and they're like, "Well, we could just go to an AI and plug in a few words oh. and get the." By the, the way, same thing for this, this is generated by Midjourney, and the caption says it's by Midjourney. Alex yes. Jones inside an American office under fluorescent lights, and uh, but also uh, I should point out, Midjourney retains the right to these images if they're turning into oh. an NFT. It may mm. get a cut. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, NFT is the most popular thing. I, I, as a musician, I know told me the most horrifying thing, uh, horrifying phrase I've ever heard about creativity a few years ago. She said, "I'm competing against all music ever published now." And I think that might be what terrifies artists, and rightly so. As a writer, I'm slightly terrified uh, because I don't. It's funny. I don't. It's not like it's easier to do art, but it's harder to get a corpus to produce, say, a news article or analysis of a contemporary thing or even a description of something um, because the, you have to have a deep corpus. But with art, the corpus is all art ever created. And so every time a, a rabbit appears in anything, that could be fodder for an AI to use. So it's it's really the sheer amount, right? It's the training wow. set. So I don't think someone's going to write an article about... Uh, I don't think an AI could write a feasibly credible article now or in the next few years about an a person entering an AI generated piece of art <laughs> in to a contest of winning. I don't know. And uh, I've seen some, they've had those, there were those ones, I can't remember what the library was, but what was the, there was a thing recently where it would generate a story if you, and in the same sort of way, you'd be like, tell, write a story in this way. I know because our pal Lex Friedman did it like, oh, write a description of this podcast. Uh -huh. and, and it was, uh, you know, surprisingly good. Again, I think the, but, the but biggest full length. Could you write a feature that? Uh, way, yeah, though. I don't That's know. I, thing, I think right? I mean, not now, maybe, but I wouldn't discount it for the future. And I think the, like, the biggest challenge with right. this is is this Scoops argument? Are the only thing we have. Is this <laughs> argument argue ultimately moot because it's like, well, the the genie's out of the bottle. Like once it's out yeah. there. You can't stop it. It's done. So yeah, it comes down to rights. It's like the source material, the training set to me becomes the uh, issue. We were talking about that on this very podcast with Christina Warren, uh, who, who couldn't talk about it because she works for Microsoft and um, the uh, <laughs> co-pilot uh, product um, some uh, weeks ago, because that's the same thing. It's like who, if, if there are public, yeah. you know, this art isn't even public, right? Some of it is art that's copyrighted, but it was. So uh, Andy Bio did a very mm -hmm. interesting oh, yes. study. He, uh, this is uh, Waxy.org, he uh, stabled, a few, unlike uh, Dolly 2, uh, OpenAI does not release the training set, so we can't see where that came from. Because Stable Diffusion is open source, you know where it came from, where the training set came from. He says, we indexed the 12 million images in a sample, by the way, there are many, many more images. They, you know, they didn't want to go through 2.3 billion images, so they took a subset, 12 million images, and they indexed them. Uh, by domain, half the images were sourced from only 100 domains, domains, and the largest number of images came from Pinterest. 8.5% mm. mm. of the total data set uh, scraped from Pinterest. So completely disregarding uh, you know, copyright or ownership. Um, Fine Art America, second biggest domain, which sells art, prints, and posters. Uh uh, 244,000 from Shopify, then Wix and Squarespace, Redbubble. So it's scraped images all over the net. Uh, number one artist of the top 25 artists huh. in the data set, only three are still living. Phil Koch, Aaron Hansen, and Steve Henderson. The most frequent artist, who would you guess? Thomas huh. Kincaid. Of course. The, 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 the painter of light trademark. Well, and it depends to a certain degree, like, how does this, I, I, you know, again, I don't know enough about the technology of this one to know how that works in terms of ingesting that material. I mean, one argues that if you are an artist, you have gone and looked at a lot of art and you have True. that art. Is it, You've done the same thing. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Like, so, ah, but, you know, are you, as long as you're not storing those, if you're just sort of exposing the AI to that and it's deriving its own conclusions... I don't know. That seems legit to me, but maybe I'm not taking everything into consideration here. Yeah. 